Welcome to this Body and Mind training tutorial. We're going to be exploring certain aspects of the head turning left and right exercise. Hopefully you've already had a chance to experiment a little bit with this exercise. And what we're going to do now in this short video is unpack three aspects related to that very first instruction that you receive on doing the head left and right exercise. The instruction is pay attention to the intention to move the head. So we're going to explore three aspects of this. One, how this relates to mindfulness theory. Two, the underlying neuroscience of intentionality. And then finally, this aspect of micro and macro how things that happen in the moving practices actually have a direct relevance to our broader lives. Thinking about that first aspect, how does this instruction, this invitation to bring awareness to our intention to move relate to mindfulness theory? Intentionality is often described as the heart of mindfulness. And in Shona Shapiro's model of mindfulness, she talks about three axioms, intention, attention, and attitude. And the intention here is the goal or the plan, the desired or intended act to pay attention. And most often we might be doing that, for example, to the breath. So we would start an exercise with the intention to pay attention to the breath. And in doing so, we've sort of laid down a track or a path of where we'd like to go, where we intend to be. We intend to have our attention on the breath. And as we continue to practice, we might need to renew our intention, revisit our intention, or even refresh our intention. And the reason we have to do that is actually because sometimes, even though we intend to keep our attention focused directly on the breath, actually the mind does something else. And very quickly we notice that even though we intended to pay attention to the breath, in fact, the mind has gone elsewhere and we're thinking, planning, judging, or doing some other activity that's not paying attention to the breath. But because we've laid down the intention, we have this template against which we can match what's actually happening on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And with intention, it's much quicker to detect when we're not doing the thing that we planned or intended. And so in this way, intention allows us to see more clearly when we're not doing what we intended, and then we can make this adjustment and bring our focus back to the breath. So this is one aspect of intentionality that's really key in the mindfulness practice. And we can explore this in our ability to pay attention to the intention to move in this exercise. So let's think now about some of the underlying neuroscience that's involved in this intention to move. There's a field of cognitive neuroscience which looks exactly at this issue in relation to voluntary action, also called willed action. In this field of research, what they've discovered is that the brain lays down a template of the intended movement, some 500 to up to 2,000 milliseconds before we're actually consciously aware of the movement itself. It's the brain preparing for the action by making a template or a sort of mock-up of what it expects to happen when the movement is conducted. When we then make the movement, the actual sensory consequences of the movement are compared against the predicted sensory consequences of the movement. If there's a match, that means we did what we intended to do. If there isn't a match, some alarm bells go and we might need to make an adjustment to the movement so that we can successfully complete it. In that moment, 
in the head moving left and right exercise where we pause before we even begin. We're asking the mind to attend to this template, seeing if it's possible to detect the mental activity, the mental sensations of this template of the movement. We need to pause and really pay close attention in order to be able to detect this. And it may not be possible at first, but with practice, you might be able to notice something. And what we're beginning to notice is a spreading network of activation through the brain, starting with the frontal lobes and the decision to move, spreading to the pre-supplementary motor area as we begin to prepare and coordinate the action, and then finally into the motor areas, that final bit of preparation before the signal is sent down the spine to the muscles of the neck and we begin to look left and right. And there's a few moments in this movement where we could attend to this sort of intention. Right at the beginning is one place. When we intend to cease the movement is another place. So right at the end of the exercise. And we can also be really curious about the different types of intention templates that get laid down in the brain when we change direction. So these are moments of transition, when we've gone as far as we can to the left and we make that decision to come back to the right and vice versa, when we've gone right and we make that decision to come back to the left. So what we're doing here is we're trying to bring mindfulness to this template, the expected sensory consequences of the intended movement, even before we move. So in our mindfulness practice and in the brain in relation to movement, there's this property of setting intention and laying down a template or a track against which we can compare what actually happens. And this doesn't only happen at the motor level or at the moment by moment level, in our mindfulness practice. This also happens at a much bigger and broader level. I call this the macro level. The micro level is the moment by moment intentionality that we bring, for example, to pay attention to the breath or to the movement. But this also plays out at a much, much bigger level. And we might be curious, for example, to think about what is the intention that we bring to the practice. Why are we doing it? What is it that keeps us practicing, even when we don't feel like it? These are much higher level intentions. And we know that these change over the course of the practice. So it may well be that symptoms of depression or anxiety or difficulties dealing with stress was the first thing that brought you or one of your clients to mindfulness practice. Perhaps they were interested in learning more about self-regulation or self-development or self-liberation. Shapiro's work speaks to this topic and she's shown that actually intentions change over the course of the practice. So it's well worth revisiting these broader level intentions as we go through our mindfulness journey. Another interesting exercise that you might try is to begin to unpack how the words intention and goal might be similar or different. This can really be an illuminating exercise. And what it mostly shows is that the intentionality aspect is more about the starting point and where we hope to get to and all the ups and downs of the journey on the way rather than having a specific destination that we may or may not eventually reach in our practice. So hopefully this video has given you a little bit of food for thought around these three aspects of intentionality. One, how this relates to our mindfulness practice. Two, what happens in the brain in terms of intention to move. And then finally, the bigger picture of intentionality and mindfulness. So please, Go and listen to the exercise again 
and see if it's been helpful to have a little bit of this understanding while you're practicing.